all black hole GPUs are gone every single one of them and they are not coming back anytime soon so if you want to have one you need to order it now and you will get it in the late 2025 maybe even at the beginning of 2026 and these are great news for nvidia investors so according to these news many analysts have updated their target prices and actually raised them so i think it's time we update our target price and do the valuation of nvidia again we did one a couple of months ago and we got to the target price of $161 per share, but we have many updates and we have many news, so it's time we take our valuation and redo it again. So our valuation will heavily rely on what I'm about to tell you. So if you want it to actually make sense, stick around and find out all the news we're about to tell you so that you will see the valuation and it will seem, well, logical to you and not just invented out of the thin air. Hi all, welcome to the Market Monkeys channel. I'm Vadim and today we're talking about Nvidia. So the wildest news coming from Nvidia right now is about the sales of their black hole GPUs. So we have waited so long to actually see them in production to see the demand for these GPUs. We all remember how successful these legendary, already legendary Hopper family was and how fast H100 sold. So we have waited to see how the black hole GPUs will be doing. And apparently they are all gone for the next year. So Nvidia has sold everything they had and they have sold everything they mt1 semiconductors can produce for the next 12 months and this was apparent during the latest investor meeting of nvidia when in the interview to morgan stanley analyst nvidia ceo jensen huang said that the supply for the next 12 months is completely sold out so what had happened is that aws google meta microsoft oracle and coreweave have snapped up absolutely everything that Nvidia had and their contracts if you're looking at the contracts they are having they are insane so when a couple of weeks ago Jensen Huang said in the CNBC interview that everybody wants to have the most everybody wants to be first and that the demand is insane I personally thought that this just a regular CEO hype every CEO thinks that their company is the most in demand and everybody wants to buy them product but no this is actually what is happening right now. So Microsoft is expecting up to 65,000 black hole GPUs shipped in Q1 2025. Google has reportedly ordered over 400,000 GPUs for 2025 in the deal worth more than $10 billion. Meta also has a deal for $10 billion with Nvidia and OpenAI bought for them by Microsoft also is expecting between 55 and 65,000 GPUs in Q1 2025. If you find this information valuable and if you have learned something new, press the like button, subscribe to our channel. It really helps the algorithm to pick up our video. And if you look at the technical specification for these GPUs, it's no wonder. I'm not a huge expert in GPUs, but just to take a look at the specs, we're not going to get into tech stuff here. But according to NVIDIA, GB200 NVL72, by the way, NVL72, you will see it on the picture. It's a rack which consists of many black hole GPUs, which are supposed to handle a big workload. So we are not talking about one GPU, we're basically talking about a box of them. So you're comparing performance of box of black hole GPUs with the box of H100 GPUs. I'm sorry to all the technical people who are cringing right now, but GB200 NVL72 provides up to 30 time performance increase compared to the same number of NVIDIA H100 Tensor Core GPUs for LLM inference workloads. 30 times and we are not comparing black hole with some i don't know outdated like celeron or pentium 2 cpus no we are comparing them to something which was top of the line the most advanced thing ever just half a year ago and the new stuff is 30 times better and hearing all of these news and all of these specifications and you know what is actually funny in march 2025 just like they did in march 2024 nvidia will introduce a new family of gpus and they will be much much better than the black hole family now let's talk about another thing and this thing i think is actually very important to nvidia to their sales and i haven't seen many analysts 
talk about this. And the thing I'm talking about is sales to China. So we have seen the effect that sales to China, their numbers or their projections for 2025 can have with the company. If you haven't seen them, go and watch what happened to ASML just a couple of days ago. So the ASML stock has dropped about 20% just because their outlook of sales to China was weaker than expected following the restrictions on high-tech stuff exported to China. So this information about sales in China is very important because it will affect our valuation. So stick around to see how the valuation is affected and what the target price would be. So Nvidia used to have strong revenue coming from China. And again, looking at this graph, for example, you can see exactly when US tariffs on exports of high-tech stuff have hit and the sales have dropped off a lot. This was due to Nvidia not being able to sell H100s to China. But Nvidia came up with a pretty cool solution. They have introduced a special line of GPUs, H20s, L20s and L2s. These GPUs actually comply with US government export restriction and sales to China have been growing again. Actually last quarter we have seen that the sales are pretty much as they were before the US tariffs on export to China have hit. So I'm really curious to see next quarter result because I'm betting that these results sales to China will surpass $4 billion and for the next year overall sales to China will surpass about $20 billion yearly. One thing I have to say about China. From the top line growth perspective, sales to China are awesome. Huge market and Nvidia can really boost their revenue. But the problem is with the margin. So Chinese market is very competitive, especially with Huawei forcing Nvidia to lower their prices. And this can actually explain this drop in the gross margin. In previous quarter, Nvidia's gross margin dropped to 75.1% from 78% and many attribute this to actually having less margins in China. So good for revenue, bad for margins. One last thing we have to talk about before we get to valuation. And again, this is something that is being missed all the time is that Nvidia not only sell GPUs, actually they have a line of product, a new line of product they have announced recently, which management thinks will be a multi-billion dollar line of product. And when management of Nvidia thinks something is going to be a multi-billion dollar line, you better listen to that. So we are talking about Nvidia's networking revenue. And this segment has received a major boost from the launch of Nvidia's Ethernet based networking platform, which is called Spectrum X. So again, according to management, this can become a multi-billion dollar line of product within a year. And actually it looks like a reasonable approach because the whole data center networking Ethernet market is right now about $18 billion and it grows 70%, it grew 70% year over year from 2023. So it's a big market and Nvidia can take a huge part of it. But I have to say most of the growth we have seen from Nvidia in networking is still due to their old technologies, which is called InfiniBand, which Nvidia got from Mellanox, which they acquired in 2019. And now that we wrapped up all the news, we have all the information and all the data, let's finally get to the valuation. And I will kind of explain step by step each number and how we arrived to that number. Okay, let's start with the years because this is the thing which annoys me personally the most. Right now, Nvidia is in Q2 2025 and I don't want this in my table. So I'm putting this year as 2024 and next year as 2025. This just would be easier to get your expectation of the target price and when it's going to come up. So 2024, I'm putting revenue as $130 billion. And my assumptions are that Nvidia's Q3 revenue will be $34 billion. Yes, I know that it's a bit more than what the management is guiding towards, but the management is always low bowling number. So I'm assuming $34 billion Q3 and I'm assuming $38 billion in Q4. Given the net margin that Nvidia has right now of 54%, we just leave this margin as it is. We get net income of 70 billion and 200 million dollars, which gives us earnings per share of $2.84. Now let's talk about PE ratio for Nvidia. I don't want to take the PE ratio, which they have right now, which is in 60s. And I don't want to take the forward PE ratio, which is assumed for Nvidia, which is at 43, because we have 
two quarters right now, this year, and we have still two quarters to wait for. So I took the average between the two. So if you see this number of PE ratio of 55, which I took as too low, adjust yourself accordingly. But I have taken 55 and my fair price for Nvidia this year is drum roll, $156.20. And this is what we expect in Nvidia to have in Q4 in the results for Q4. For the next year, I'm expecting the revenue growth of 87%. This is the estimate of all the analysts. To be honest, I would expect Nvidia to grow even more, but 87% is what all the analysts are expecting. I'm lowering net margin. So it seems weird because we talked about like Blackwell and how they are selling well, but remember this Chinese stuff? I told you that the more Nvidia sells to China, the more revenues they have, but the lower margin they have. And that's why I'm lowering margins here. And we get to the net income of $124 billion and some change. We get to earnings per share of $5.02, forward PE ratio, again, 43. If you think this is too low, because it, it seems too low, to be honest, gives us target price of 200 and almost 16 dollars. In 2026, we are assuming revenue growth of 63%. So I'm lowering revenue growth as Nvidia grows as a company and I'm lowering net margin because what I explained in China. So we get to the net income of $200 billion, $8.07 earnings per share, forward PE of 33, and we get to the target price of $266. If you do the same for 2027, we get to the target price of $324, which to be honest, seems reasonable because in four years Nvidia will grow a lot. If I wanted to do some adjustment to the valuation I just did, I would actually up the numbers a little bit because the P ratio, again, I'm really lowballing everything which is estimated for Nvidia. By the way, pay attention. This is not a DCF valuation and there are some risk and there are some assumptions which you need to understand. So in DCF valuation, we estimate all of the numbers. In this valuation, which is called multiples valuation or relative valuation, we are valuing Nvidia relatively to other companies and sector or according to the multiples. So if you're kind of thinking the multiple should be bigger, your target price will be bigger. If you're assuming the multiples are much smaller, your target price will be much smaller. If you are not comfortable with 55 PE, change it to whatever you want and you will see your target price changing accordingly. One more hidden assumption, we are projecting the market to pretty much stay as it is right now. If we are heading into correction, these numbers would be much smaller. If we have a sudden bull run because Fed cuts their interest rates, these numbers can be much higher. By the way, something which I maybe should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am actually both of us are Nvidia investors. We are holding Nvidia stock after the valuation we did last time and we are going to keep holding them. We are not selling for now. We are not buying more for now and we are perfectly happy with our position. And now I would actually like to address this for all of our viewers. This valuation, everything we are doing on Nvidia, we are more than welcome you to write back to us to actually agree or even better disagree with us. So tell us what your target price for Nvidia is and what is your average buying price so we can understand at least if you are bullish on everything Nvidia is doing or actually you are bearish. I think this would be beneficial for all of us because that way you will understand kind of the moods of your peers and the moods of investors are often the most valuable part in determining the stock price. If you find this information helpful, valuable, or if you just learned something new out of this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel. We have many more videos like that. Thank you for your time and we will see you in the next video. Take care.